So guys, today we're back out here in the lovely, lovely green summer lush niceness of Alaska. And today we're gonna to be going kind of part two over my bushcrafting setup. In this first type of video, I went over my bushcraft EDC and I basically went over everything that I carry on my body. Now for particularly today, I have it a little bit different because I'm running my Glock 19 in a cross draw. So it's a little bit different, but for the most part, <coughs> For the most part, my Bushcraft EDC looks like what it looks like in the video that I went over with my Bushcrafting EDC. Now, however, I did not go over my pack setup. So in today's video, we're going to be sitting down and taking a quick look at what is in my backpack for this summer and what I kind of carry for bushcrafting during the summer in the backpack. So without any further ado, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can enjoy more nice, awesome summer Alaskan awesomeness like this. And trust me, it is gonna get quite a bit more awesome. But let's jump into what I have in my backpack and what I carry. So let's go over. All right, guys, so hopefully the sun isn't too bad. It is very, very bright out here. But today we're gonna to be going over my entire pack setup, minus this because this is just out for a today's video so this is actually not usually there but this is actually for today's video so usually what I carry and one thing I kind of forgot to mention that I usually carry on my body or on my backpack is a lightweight um, jacket like this one this is just my Columbia this is my wintertime jacket too but that is so with Columbia's some Columbia's you can add liners to them or take away liners so in the winter I run this as a liner or I have a winter liner for this but during the summer, this is also my rain jacket. So I usually bring this out here and just in case it rains, praise the Lord. It was actually raining a little bit earlier, but it is not now. So it's a nice, beautiful, very beautiful sunny day. So I don't need the jacket on right now. So <clears throat> usually I'll just leave it with my pack. So jumping into the pack, kind of starting off exterior because I have actually changed up the pack a little bit. So starting in the front, what I run is I have my pace speeds to the left and then I also have a little compass on here to the right. Yeah, just making sure that to the right. And so that these two in combination kind of help with navigation on the fly. So if I'm just trying to measure my pace count in general direction, it's nice to just have a couple little instruments. Obviously these are rough instruments. A tiny little compass like this is not the best, but I don't want to strap a huge, you know, really complicated compass to the outside of the backpack. This is just for quick directional navigation. Same with the pace speeds, they're not like a GPS. Well, they are similar, but they're not as exact as a GPS. It's just for general transportation as I'm moving, kind of helping keep track of different things. So then another change I did was that I swapped the hydration hose to being downward like this because I like the fact that it can be right at my mouth and so all I have to do is just pop this off, take a sip, then close it back up. Really simple and really easy. Another quick change I made is that unlike actually in most times, I would usually be running a Camelback hydration bladder, but because I'm gonna be doing some reviews of water filters and stuff like that, I've actually decided to go over to a Geiger rig. Now, the reason why I transitioned over to the Geiger rig is because as you guys can see here, it has a, uh, this is how it opens. So you just pull this and then it opens out from the top. So that makes it significantly easier to fill out of a pond. And it also makes it significantly easier that when I get back to my house, I can clean this out a lot better than I could clean out a Camelback. That's primarily one of the reasons why I never did pond water with a Camelback is because I was always worried about still having some of that nasty residue in there because Camelback hydration bladders are not the easiest to clean out. So anyways, that's the hydration bladder that I'm running uh, for this setup. So jumping over to exterior pouches, we're gonna start off with this one because it's very simple. All that is in here is just my IFAC, just making sure. Yeah, it's just the IFAC, nothing else in there, of course. I've already gone over that in Bushcraft Medical. And you know, some people like Dave Canterbury, they don't like having an IFAC, but personally, I think it's a really easy and awesome addition to add to your bushcrafting pack. Of course, if you're trying to run minimalistic, 
you know, this is one of the first things that goes for me personally because I know I'm not gonna hurt myself. But in case anything goes awry, I know especially with Ashley, she gets herself into hurting herself sometimes. So it's nice to know that if she hurts herself with an ax or whatever, I have serious medical supplies. So moving over to the other side here, so this pathway is just a little bit. <laughs> this side is a little bit actually downgraded for the summer, but what I'm running in here is I think just three things. And that is first, I now actually have decided to add a full-time multi-tool to the whole uh, setup here. I know off and on I've ran the surge in this backpack, but I wanted a full-time but I wanted a full-time uh, multi-tool, so what I actually got was a Leatherman Blast. And this is the last year's model, but this is a Leatherman Blast. So it still has the interchangeable bits and everything, but, or sorry, did I say Blast? I meant Super Tool 300, apologies. Not Blast, Super Tool 300, so it has your standard tools. And I like the Super Tool 300 because it still has things from the surge such as the awl as you guys will notice there it has the awl it has good sized uh what is this saw and it's, it's actually a really good sized tool for the woods so it's probably a little bit bigger than what i would recommend edc'ing i know some guys do everyday carry uh super tool 300s it's a little bit too big for me i tried that out but for me i'm more like a, a charge plus kind of fan so for my everyday carry, I actually run a Leatherman Charge. But for whatever reason, if I do not have the Leatherman Charge or whatever, I wanted to have a dedicated multi-tool on the actual setup. So digging deeper, I also have, of course, the Bushcraft Essentials uh, folding or the large folding bush box. And I have its two little uh, grill, basically components for making a grill on it. Then lastly, I have the good old, not so much old, but good, uh, this is the Gobspark Armageddon in bright orange. So that's the uh, kind of backup ferro rod for this uh, setup. So that's all that is in this little pocket here. So still with sticking with exterior pockets. Uh, this is the last exterior pocket really of the pack. I guess you could also consider this one But anyways, so like I said water filters are gonna be another thing for this summer I'm gonna be doing a review of a few of them So this is a Aquamira Frontier Max and it actually corresponds with the Geiger rig and it works It's just basically it technically works with any um, What is it hydration bladders, but it's just an inline uh, water filter that you can use with hydration bladders. I also have the Geiger rig uh, Pressurizer in there. So with the Geiger rig one of the things that makes it special is you can pressurize your water bladder But you have to have the tubes in like the hand pump to do that. So that's what's also in there. So taking a look at this in here. I also am running the platypus once again I'm primarily running two water filters for testing, but this is the Platypus Gravity Works 2 liter, and this is the full setup, so it adapts to bottles or to water bladders and stuff like that. And I'm really curious about the Gravity Works because it seems to be an insanely fast um, water filter. So I think it does like a liter and a half a minute, so that's pretty impressive. So other than that, I've kind of converted this area over to just having food and different things like that because I also do some camping with this bushcrafting. So I have trail mix, a whole bunch of, uh, what are these, cliff bars. So I have multiple different flavors and varieties of like blueberry crisp, chocolate brownie, white chocolate macadamia nut. So just a whole bunch of different um, cliff bars in there and some trail mix. So that's what's primarily carried in there. So moving over to this kind of clamshell area, I have, as per standard, I have my um, different paracords. So I have some just loose paracord and then I have some paracords on spools like this one. Then I have, of course, my four stakes. So I have two stakes on each side here and those are to use for my all season tarp or my underground quilt company, our uh, UGQ Winter Dream 11, which is in here. We'll get to that later. So that's all that is carried in this little area right here. So then next to that is, of course, the good old fire starting area. So I have my fire starting kit here. Then I have the bot hanger. So this is a titanium bot hanger for the bot. 
and then I have a little bow drill spindle socket. Oh no. Okay, so now jumping into the main pouch here for what I carry. So disregarding a few things because this is filming equipment, I don't really consider that uh, like part of the serious kit. And this is actually for another video. It was meant to be put in my wife's pack. So anyways, disregarding a few things, um, the primary stuff is what you see here. So these are the hammock straps for the double hammock. And of course, I run a hammock bliss double or I think it's called a double, and that is for my wife and I. We like to do a lot of bushcrafting outings together, so it makes sense to have a double hammock for us. And then lastly, the Underground Quilt Company UGQ Winter Dream 11. So that's basically my lightweight hammock setup there, the basics to it. Another thing I keep forgetting to mention is, and you guys probably wouldn't even notice unless I brought it up, is that you guys will notice now that there's a couple pieces of paracord here at the bottom of the pack and I have this empty because I have multiple different sleeping bag setups that I run. I have a double sleeping bag for when I go out with Ashley or I also have different sing uh, single sized um, sleeping bags so regardless to what I'm doing it kind of depends on application that's why I didn't put a, a sleeping bag underneath this pack though I do have the pack set up to run a sleeping bag on the bottom here. So that's basically my setup is whatever sleeping bag I need applicable plus the hammock, hammock uh, straps and then the tarp. So that works really well for me personally. So then next to that, I have the silky big boy right here for the for sawing down stuff. The backup knife is the buck thug and I have a really thick, really big ferro rod in there so that's kind of my backup knife setup should anything happen to the glorious little aurora should anything happen to the aurora this is the backup knife that i carry in the kit so then for cooking and general stuff like that i have the bot this is empty because this time of year i generally like to collect sap and other things like that so generally that's for water catchment or collection. If I also want to run water filters, that's generally what I use it for. Then I got the Nalgene, stainless steel Nalgene. And then lastly for cooking and doing other tasks like making Bannock or whatever, I have the Uberlieben. I can never remember the name of this pot, but this is an Uberlieben pot and it just has some crackers in it. So that's basically all that I keep in there. Not too much, ironically it does kind of fill the pack, but I also like to leave some room in here because sometimes I have to carry extraneous things. So just, I leave a little bit of room in here for whatever I have to pack in. But that's the basics to what all is my summer pack. Okay guys, so hopefully you enjoy taking a look at my pack. I know it's a little bit expansive and generally how I like to start out my summers or what I generally go into summer is with a lot of stuff. And I learned to slim it down, kind of keep what I want and disregard the rest so my fall setup will be a little bit different so that's kind of why I like to do these in seasons but anyways hopefully you enjoy taking a look at this setup and <coughs> as and as always guys god bless and I'm out